Hello everybody and welcome to the channel Out of Ammo, Out of Time. I'm your host, Krabby Terror 8 and here we are in episode 24 of the Investigator Games. Uh, this is a little bit different this week. We're doing something a little bit experimental, a little bit out there. <laughs> We've had a few teething problems, but it seems to be working okay now. We are um, doing a live stream of uh, this particular episode because I want to try it out for the League of Extraordinary Investigators to see how well it runs. Hopefully it runs fine because um, uh, if that works then this will be the dominant way I'll be doing my playthrough of uh, Dunwich Legacy uh, for that League. If you want to know more details about that League I have actually posted up a video about it and how it might work. And I would encourage anyone listening or watching this uh, to think about signing up. Uh, all the details are in the video on the channel. So indeed, this week we are, um, yes, Investigator Games with Marie Lambeau. Now, what is the Investigator Games? For those of you who are new to the channel, the Investigator Games is a little bit like the Hunger Games. So what we do is we... Uh, we take each of the investigators uh, solo and we take their Fantasy Flight Games starter deck and we um, put them through the gathering and we see how we go. And, um, and of course those who do particularly well uh, are at the top of the league table and those who um, you know, don't do so well end up at the bottom of the league table. At the moment there's 23 other investigators from top to bottom. Uh, Safina Rousseau topping the, the table at the moment and poor old Calvin is languishing down the bottom and the points that you get are based on the number of victory points you amass during the gathering and then those are converted to experience points. So we've worked our way through all of the investigators and we're now in the circle undone and we're just working our way through that. Next week we'll be uh, running this through with Preston Fairmont um, but that's for another week. So, um, yeah, before we get into the details of Marie Lambeau, um, I spoke to her, or the Smoky Velvet, as she's known. Um, she's a delightful uh, person to chat to, light southern drawl, and very intense green eyes, uh, kind that are almost painful to catch uh, if you do catch her stare. And of course, uh, while we were sitting in the green room, I didn't want to uh, pass up the opportunity to ask her to sing when she did sing. Uh, and it was just absolutely mesmerizing listening to her sing. Um, her vocals are really otherworldly and she, um, she sang, as she was singing, um, a Sarah Vaughan song actually. Um, Father Matteo's cross, as you might remember, he left one in the green room over the mantelpiece, started to glow and hum uh, and Safina's picture as we know Safina donated a picture to the green room also started to glow and hum as well so that was all a bit scary um, uh, after she'd finished singing I asked her um, whether um, she um, she thought she was going to succeed at the investigator games so she told me that uh, and Look, I can't do the accent. I wouldn't pretend to do the accent, but I can quote what she said. Honey, no one could know the future quite like my grandmare. Um, and she um, foresaw that a calamity would befall one of us on this very day. Hmm. Well, I think if anyone's been having a calamity, it's probably me trying to live stream, but not that she would know about that necessarily. But uh, I know that we've had a couple of uh, investigators with some foresight, and they've uh, they foresaw some... Um, terrible things happening and maybe that's been to do with Calvin I don't know but anyway that's what she said so as you can see she's now um, sitting in the study and um, waiting to begin um, playing um, but before that we'll just uh, have a look at her stats and um, also just have a look at her deck and uh, just have a little bit of a um, chat about that Hi Oat Bob, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I'm just going through my usual preamble with the Investigator Games and I'm just, just at the point of talking about Marie Lambeau. So thank you for joining. Do appreciate Let me know if the stream is running okay. I've never done this kind of thing before. Um, so uh, 
um, yeah, let me know if it's all running okay. So uh, Marie Lambeau, yeah, she's, um, she, as I said, she's one of the Circle Undone investigators. She's got reasonable willpower and she's got reasonable intellect and uh, okay agility. The thing, like a lot of these uh, investigators in these more recent campaigns she's got a very there's one of her stats which is super low and that's fight so that means we won't be pulling out knives and machetes and, and trying to kill the ghoul priest uh, anytime soon using our fight but that's okay we've we've got other ways of doing that um, but it does mean that we will need shriveling or some such if we are going to get through the gathering in a reasonable length of time so her special abilities are interesting because they sort of wrote, they sort of orient themselves towards doom, and sort of managing doom within a scenario, which is sort of an interesting um, way of going about it. Uh, there's not a lot of cards, and there's certainly not many cards in this Final Fantasy starter deck that allow you to 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 manage doom, but basically. If she has one or more Doom amongst the cards she controls, she can take an additional action during her turn, and it, that has to be used for spell cards or spell abilities. If she gets the Elder Side effect, she can actually add Doom or remove Doom from a card she controls as well. So there's some, some, some Doom management going on there which allow her to have an extra turn. Now, you'll notice it's if you have one or more Doom among cards you control, so it doesn't it doesn't sort of escalate you know you've got two doom you get two two extra goes it's just if you have the one or more doom you get the additional action so that's an important um, point to make so if we have a look at the fantasy flight sort of starter deck as it stands um, and these decks are never optimized they're never perfect but they do give you a flavor of what Marie Lambeau is like and we can see here her sort of uh, signature event is mystifying song which fits nicely with the idea of adding doom because essentially um, it um, essentially allows the um, the uh, agenda would normally advance it can advance so so you kind of buy an extra turn or an extra round if if you like so so it's a way to offset that um, and it's a double wildcard pip so that's quite nice um, our signature weakness, not signature weakness, the basic weakness, I should say, that we pulled out randomly in Octagon. Uh, and I should say, if you are watching in Octagon and you have Octagon, um, you can actually watch it in Octagon as well. I've allowed people to watch it through that, that software as well. Um, so chronophobia, yeah, you know, you put it into play in your threat area and then view turn take a horror and you can discard chronophobia, which for Marie with uh, eight hot, with uh, eight mental strength, if you like, it's not the end of the world. It's really just a time sink. It uses up two goes. So that's the way that, that it works there. Now, our weakness is interesting uh, in this deck because um, in, in a way it helps use our, our um, signature ability because if you put Baram Sandy into play, you can't. He can't leave play unless there's three Doom on him. Um, and whenever amount of damage is placed on Investigator Baron uh, in Baron Sandy's location, place an additional damage on that Investigator. So that's uh, a little bit nasty from that perspective. But you can exhaust him and put a Doom on him when he has three or more Doom. Discard him. So he's a way of activating your special ability, um, even though there's a there's a bit of a downside as well to him. The other only only other way in this starter deck that you can do that is through the good old Arcane Initiate, which is a fantastic card for Mystics. Um, and uh, that allows you to obviously put, put a Doom when she comes into play, ideally in the Witching Hour before the Doom threshold is going to kick in anyway. And it allows you to search the top three cards of your deck for a spell card and draw it in that way. The only thing is, of course, that once the Doom threshold kicks over, she doesn't have Doom on her anymore. So uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's not going to be all the time that there's going to be Doom around, but there are some opportunities for that to take place. There's a couple of other new cards which are in the circle undone, uh, which are part of Marie's deck, which also sort of play off this Doom theme. 
and one of them is the uh, prophecy which if there are three or more doom in play prophecy gains um, an extra an extra wildcard pip and if there's six or more, more doom in play you get two down that's, that's unlikely to be something that's going to happen much in the gathering but you can imagine with some other scenarios that might be the case and then of course we've got shriveling but like all these fantasy flight starter decks there's only one shriveling <laughs> in the uh, in the whole deck so not great um, and then uh, we've got some of our more standard um, most I hope uh, everybody can hear me okay um, so anybody who's watching just let me know if the volume my audio is is, is working out okay as well um, so then we've got your standard usual sorts of spells like forbidden knowledge and uh, blinding light and good old scrying we've also got some new ones as well like deny existence which is a little bit like a little bit like ward of protection uh, it allows you to, um, if if you're going to, if an encounter card or an enemy attack would cause you to discard cards, lose resources, lose actions, take damage, you can ignore one of those effects in that way. Yeah, and um, and then there's uh, Eldritch Inspiration, which allows you to cancel the effect, uh, which is quite a nice synergy with some of the um, spells. And uh, yes, then we've got usual retinue of uh, you know, things like Drawn to the Flame, which are very handy when we get into the cellar, for example, and we just want to get those clues. Interestingly, there are a couple of um, cards here which are scavenger cards, which give you fight and evade for where you have item assets. And also this card, Act of Desperation, which could be handy. Uh, Act of Desperation, you discard an item asset which takes up a hand slot, you get plus X fight and deal plus one damage for this attack where X is a chosen assets printed resource. If you succeed with that asset you gain resources and this would be particularly handy with the flashlight which by the end of the gathering is of no use anymore. So uh, you could actually use this particularly if you've got leader Chandler on board to actually do some significant fight damage because it's a two so you would get plus two fight with leader Chandler that would be a plus three so that would get you up to about four fight and you'd get plus one damage so you could actually in combination with some other cards you could perhaps use that if required if you've shriveling has not done the job for you but it's going to be a tough thing for Marie because she's got to get shriveling on the board with without shriveling on the board um, things are not going to um, work particularly well so we will need to get shriveling on board and i think we will need lead to chandler ideally as well um, just to if nothing else as a sort of a damage and a horror soak so i think that's enough of me prattling on about marie lambeau i'm going to close and shuffle up this deck now and i think we're about ready to roll in the gathering so uh, before we draw our, our cards, I'll just read out the usual. Now, the other thing I should say for those who haven't seen me run through the gathering in the past, I put all the cards out on the table just so I don't have to mess around setting them out after we get out of the study. Of course, in the real world, um, <clears throat> yeah, that wouldn't be the case. Um, we would... Um, we would just have the study out but it's just just to make things a little bit easier so here we are in turn one i haven't drawn my hand yet but we'll do that in a second i'll just read these I'm just going to take a little sip of uh, coffee before we start um, so what's going on question mark exclamation mark it's late at night. You're holed up in your study researching the bloody disappearances that have been taking place in the region. A few hours into your research, you hear the sound of strange chanting coming from your parlour down the hall. Did I leave that uh, Enya CD on or something? At the same time, you hear dirt churning as if something were digging beneath the floor. And Act 1A, Trapped. As you leap to investigate, the door to your study vanishes before your eyes, leaving behind only solid wall. You're trapped inside your study until you can find another way out. There we go. That's gender and act. Here we are in the study. Two clues, three actions, 
five resources we are ready to roll in episode 24 of the investigator games so first thing we're going to do what are we going to do what are we going to do we're going to draw our hand uh now this is my most favorite bit what are we going to draw the main thing that we want to get is shriveling <laughs> we, we're, we're, I, I don't have any problems i don't think with you know if we get some ability to investigate boost or something that would be fine but the main thing i want to get in an opening hand is at least shriveling um that that would be ideal um, because once we know we've got shriveling then at least we know we can take on the ghoul priest later on it would also be great to get the holy rosary as well because then that just boosts our willpower that much higher which is always uh, quite nice as well so let's draw our five cards and we get um okay we get active desperation which is a good card but probably not at the beginning fearless okay not a bad card um able-bodied yep uh fourth card is baron sandy well he's our weakness so uh we'll keep going uh, drawn to the flame great card and deny existence so these are all reasonable cards but i have to say apart from drawn to the flame which will make our path into the cellar so much easier i'm really not feeling the love here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep i'm going to keep drawn to the flame and i'm going to draw a fresh set of cards there's nothing wrong with any of these cards it's just not really what i need right now so two guts oh yeah three okay blinding light we're getting more of our spells four scrying more of our spells and five forbidden knowledge so we've got lots of spells here but um i'm not unfortunately we haven't drawn scrying not scrying i always do that i call scrying when i really mean shriveling so we still don't have shriveling um and there we go so i'm going to shuffle this back up so this is our opening hand so um i think the main thing here with some of these are forbidden knowledge yeah i suppose it's resources scrying is a is, is a good and blinding light is great when we need to evade we don't need to evade at the moment because if any um if any creatures hit us in the, in the study we can get rid of them anyway but um i think i might bring out scrying because i want to really find shriveling so i'm going to use scrying to find shriveling so what i'm going to do is for my first action and before i start uh, yes marie lambeau i can see she's waving at the crowd the crowd goes wild <sighs> she waves at the crowd she's ready in the study to go and she immediately uh, starts waving her hands around and singing and strange incantations are happening and indeed here we go first thing that happens in the first action is out comes scrying so that takes up one of our arcane slots three charges <clears throat> there are three charges um yeah so we'll get that onto the table as a starting point um but i think i want to see if i can get these um clues so yes i know we could get crypt chilled and we could lose our scrying but that's going to be a risk that i'm prepared to take at this stage um oh hi lost hunter 13 thank you so much for for joining i really do appreciate it i've never streamed this before so this is all a very new uh <laughs> new experience here um but yes it wasn't the world's best uh draw to start with hopefully scrying can uh, can can help anyway i'm going to uh, try and get these clues so that at least if we draw a ghoul minion we're not trying to find <laughs> a ghoul minion at the very beginning in the study because that would that would not be a great place uh to start so um so what i'm going to do next for my second go is i'm going to um is i'm going to uh, investigate the study so we're two versus a four so that's the uh that's the good old minus two or better so let's see what the uh chaos bag has for us and the chaos bag has my uh, plus one well there we go easy the clue is literally at our feet with a great big neon sign on it saying clue clue so yep so there we go we get the clue and then for our final action we're going to do that again so it's a two versus a four uh minus two or better chaos bag gives us of course it does minus the chaos bag of course gives us an auto fail where would we be without the auto fail 
dang it there we go never mind so that was our first um that was our first turn so we didn't have the best draw um we didn't get we didn't get shriveling and we're going to be buggered if we don't get shriveling but we did bring out scrying which hopefully will help us um we managed to successfully investigate once and then we went right to the other end of the scale and crashed and burned clearly whoever set up the gathering um really did hide this other clue really quite out of the way so um yeah just uh just want to leave a note for everybody so that's the end of our first uh, investigation phase, um, which was sort of a mixed bag. And we will move into the enemy phase, or the enema phase, as I like to call it. And of course, there are no enemas to speak of at the moment, so we can move straight into the uh, upkeep phase. And we draw able-bodied, which um, if you control two or fewer item assets, tick. I've only got one. In fact, I have no item. Oh yeah, I do have an asset, so I've got it's not an item asset though, aha. Uh -huh. So I've got zero, then I get it gains, um, oh, well, if you control one or fewer item assets, tick, tick, it's double fight, double evade. So that would be handy actually, if uh, we, need, uh, we, we need that. Okay, so that's the end of the upkeep phase. Uh, so we move into the good old mythos phase the first phase of the mythos phase in turn two and it's now time for something we all know and we all love and that is the good old encounter deck so let's see what the encounter deck has for us and the encounter deck gives us okay the encounter deck gives us rats all right okay no big deal um all right so we get rats onto the table um, you know, that's more annoying than anything. So, uh, yeah, let's see how we deal with that. One fight versus one fight. It's the uh, fight of the Colossuses here. One versus one. We'll see how we go. So, yep, that's the, uh, that's the encounter card. So we're back into the second investigation phase. Three actions onto Marie. So we're here in the study. We only have one clue to get. So... There are kind of two two ways we could go about this. We could, of course, just take an attack of opportunity and get the other clue and get out. That would be one one way to go about it. Or we could um, we could um, fight the uh, good old rats, which we just need to successfully fight them. And I'm thinking we could use. I've never used this card before. We could use able-bodied because. Because we have so few assets, one or fewer item assets, we can we can get three fight. It feels like a bit of overkill, but I suppose it means we get rid of the rats in one go. And we're not planning on fighting that often, but it's probably easier to fight them than to evade them. Or I could hold that and just try a one for one, but I feel like I'm going to be wasting time. And as we know in the investigator game, speed is of the essence. Uh, look, I'm going. I'm going to commit it. So I'm going to commit able-bodied. So we're a three, we're a four fight, four versus one. So a minus three or better. Chaos bag gives us a minus two. If there's a ghoul enemy, there isn't. So there we go. We kill the rats dead. That was our first action. Great. Second action um, is to, uh, of course, um, investigate. So it's a two versus a four. So we want a minus two or better. Chaos bag gives us a zero. So there we go. We've got the second clue. Hooray! We got the second clue. Now, I could throw in the clues and go to the hallway um, and then get up to the attic. Do I do that or do I use the scrying to see if I can um, find the... Uh, yeah, Sorry, that was my second turn. So I've got one turn left. So either I stay in the study and start the next turn, or I uh, move into the hallway and get up to the attic. Hmm. Use the scrying. I feel like I've already wasted a bit of time, so I'm actually feeling like we should get ourselves up to the attic rather than mess around. Although... Um, 
it might be better to have something like uh, blinding light out onto the table with its evasion. So, hmm, yeah, I think I think I'm going to play it safe. I could really go at this really really strong, but I think I'm going to play it safe. So, I'm going to spend another action, and I'm going to bring out two. And I'm going to bring out the blinding light, so that's my third action. So we now have a way to evade enemies. And how many? Ah, oh, as many times as you want. Oh, hold on, what am I doing? Ah, oh, no, it's not a it's not that kind of spell. Ah <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, ah oh dear, of course it's not. I'm thinking it's like a, a, a scrying, it's an asset, of course it's an event. Um, that would be something like Forbidden Knowledge. So what I might do instead is scry. So let's exhaust scrying. Um, take off a charge. Yeah. Look at the top three cards of your deck and return them in any order. So what have we got? We've got one, two, ooh, three. Okay, so we've got to put them in some kind of order. Um, so... Baron's going to come up soon. We've got Deny, uh, we've got Eldritch Inspiration, which is not much ch use. And then this card, which is reasonable. So what I might do is I might put Eldritch Inspiration there, and I might put the Baron... Oh, maybe I want to keep the Baron for later, so maybe I put the Baron at the bottom. Do them in that order. But no Shriveling, unfortunately. So uh, that's that's rather unfortunate. Okay, so that's the end of our turn. So we managed to kill the rats. We managed to um, get the uh, get the clue, uh, and then I use the scrying to see whether indeed uh, shriveling is there anywhere near, and it and it isn't. So that's the end of our second turn. Things not going too fast at the moment. We move into the enema phase. There are no enemies to speak of, so we move into the upkeep phase, and we get surprise, surprise, deny existence. So this is a nice card. It doesn't cost anything. Um, when an encounter card or an enemy attack would cause you to do one of the following, discard cards from your hand, lose resources, lose actions, take damage, or take horror. Interestingly, it wouldn't work with Crypt Chill because that's not losing a card from your hand or discarding cards. But any of those things, you can ignore that, ignore that aspect. So you have to choose one of them. But, you know, helpful card. So we move into the good old Mythos phase. There are now two Doom on what's going on. So let's see what the Encounter deck has for us. And the Encounter deck has... Wow, if we'd gone up to the Attic, we would have been in all kinds of trouble because we get the Flesh Eater. The Flesh Eater has entered the Attic. Oh, no, it hasn't entered the Attic because we're still in the study. Yes, we're, we're not playing uh, Return to the Night of the Zealots. So the Flesh Eater... Um, can't exist because we're in the study and technically these other locations don't exist so it never spawns so it just disappears we don't get the victory point for it obviously but it just disappears so there we go interesting um all right so that's kind of a free free pass from the encounter deck so we um, move into the investigation phase we put three actions onto marie um don't know if anybody's watching at the moment is anybody still watching it says one person's watching uh, please let me know if i've never never tried streaming live before so please let me know if it's all running okay it's hard to tell i'm looking at it through my ipad on a little screen on the right so i'm assuming it's running okay but i can't obviously tell so if you can let me know in the chat whether everything's running okay and it sounds okay i'd really appreciate that um, so, what we're going to do first of all, before we start taking actions, is to throw in our clues and uh, flip the traps. So, here we are. So, you notice the edges of your newly purchased rug are tattered and mud-stained. Finding this odd, you shift the furniture aside and pull back the rug. To your surprise, you see the door leading out of your study. You slowly turn the knob and the door swings open, revealing your hallway below. You jump through the doorway, landing on your feet on soft dirt. The door to the study slams shut, nearly hitting you in the head above you. 
the smell of burning wood fills the narrow hall, intermingled with the scent of rot and decay. Mm, rot and decay. So, yep, usual things. So, uh, study disappears. Doink. We move into the hallway. Wee! Boink. Um, and that disappears. And we are now in the main part of the gathering. So, the barrier, Act 2A. A glowing barrier blocks the path to your parlour. As you move toward it, intense heat forces you to back away. <gasps> Picking up a handful of dirt, you toss it at the barrier and watch in horror as dirt incinerates. Uh, thank you, Lost Hunter 13. I do appreciate that feedback. That's, that's great. Um, perhaps there's something in the cellar or attic that can help. Hmm, I wonder. So, when the round ends, investigators in the hallway may as a group spend the requisite number of clues to advance. So, here we are. They're in the hallway. So, the first thing to do, obviously, is to first action, la -dee -da -dee -da, up to the attic. Flip the attic. Doink. Uh, two clues in the attic. And, yes, the um, carcass of a malformed beast is just too much. Um... Okay, thanks, oh, Bob. Yeah, I've noticed that the video cuts out now and again. I do apologize about that. Um, I'm not sure whether there's anything I can do in the settings for that, but thank you for the feedback. I appreciate it. So here we are in the attic. Uh, we take a horror, obviously. <gasps> there we go. We've taken a horror. And, um, yeah, so we've got two goes left. Now, what, there's a couple of things we could do. We could just straight up spend uh, two goes and get the, all the clues um, and I'm kind of inclined to do that because as you may or might not know in the investigator games how you end up on the table the league table with the other investigators is how quickly you do it so um, I think if Marie is going to I mean we're going to get to a stage where we'll probably go down to the cellar use drawn to the flame we'll have all the clues and then we've got time to find this darned scrying scrying darned shriveling because that's what we're going to need at some stage the other thing i'm thinking about is we're going to get baron samdi in a couple of goes so we've got to kind of deal with him as well uh, and we want to get rid of him as quickly as possible so let's spend two turns um, um just looking at the um uh, sorry investigating the attic so we're all four it's a one, so it's a minus three or better. So second action, investigate, minus three or better. Chaos bag gives us a zero, so we succeed. And we'll do that again, investigate again. Chaos bag gives us a minus one and we succeed again. And that means we have our first victory point. Crowd goes wild. <sighs> Marie waves to the crowd. Uh, she's very happy she's gotten her first victory point under her belt, which is fantastic. So she's off and running on the victory points. So next turn, we'll be racing down to the cellar and get, getting those two clues withdrawn to the flame. We're not going to mess about. We're just going to straight up get those clues. So there we go. Um, yeah, that was a reasonably successful um, round. We got ourselves out of the study. We got up to the um, attic. Um, we then uh, investigated and we successfully investigated and got our victory point. Easy. So let's see, um, let's see then what happens. We're into the enemy phase or the enema phase, as I like to call it. There are no enemas to speak of. So we move into the upkeep phase and surprise, surprise, surprise because of scrying. We, uh, ah, I've just realized if we use scrying again next go, we can avoid the Baron and hopefully uh, keep doing that at least for a little bit. But then again, we don't want him popping out when we've got... Um, well, then again, maybe it might be worthwhile having him pop out when we're trying to fight the ghoul priest because that means we get an extra action, so we'd actually be able to fight four times. So there may be some that may be positive in that sense, but anyway. Um, okay, so that's the upkeep phase. Nice hand of cards, plenty of resources. We haven't really spent many resources, so we really don't need this forbidden knowledge. We might use the forbidden knowledge um, to try and get Leader Chandler on board if uh, if we get to that point okay so we move into turn four this is turn four now ah, and yes indeed it's time for the agenda to flip so flip the agenda 
Your house continues to change before your very eyes. The walls have decayed and the ground in many rooms has turned to dirt. It's almost as if you've been transported somewhere else entirely, although every now and again you recognise elements of your former home. Ah, there's my platinum disc. I wonder where that was. Ah, there we go. There's my um, golden microphone that I thought I'd lost. There it is. There's my MTV Music Award. I wondered where that had gone. So the lead investigator must either discard a card at random from their hand or take two horror. We could take the two horror. Um, I don't re I don't want to lose Drawn to the Flame. I really don't want to lose these cards, so I think I'm going to take the two horror. So, yeah, that gives us three horror. I've still got five, so I feel like that's probably the best thing to do. Um, okay. So here we are on Agenda 2A, Rise of the Ghouls. The floor beneath you is giving away, and you'll see a vast network of tunnels twisting into the darkness below. Shapes and silhouettes of strange creatures move swiftly through the tunnels, trying to find a way up. You probably don't want to be here when they do. Yes, indeed. Okay, so we've now got seven turns to get a move on. We really want to try and trigger the ghoul priest before the end of the agenda, but uh, we'll see how we go. Okay, so I think it's time for us to draw from the good old encounter deck. And this time we get... Uh, <laughs> I just spoke about how we've got to get through this as quickly as possible before the agenda flips. And what do we get? The good old ancient evil. So that's an extra doom. Uh, that way i mean we we've been apart from rats it's been reasonably okay we haven't got any crypt shields and we haven't had any uh we haven't had anything else like that so at least that's something so there we go okay that's the end of the um uh, mythos phase so we'll move into the good old investigation phase three actions on marie so here we are in the attic um and i think the main thing is we need to get ourselves down to the cellar. Um, however, the Baron is going to come out. We know that because of scrying. So actually, I am going to scry again. So the first thing I'm going to do is do the old scrying. So we'll exhaust scrying. Ah, there we go. Look at the top three cards of the deck and uh, return them to the top of that deck in any order. So look at this. Oh, there he is. There we go. There we go, and of course there is still no, <laughs> still no shriveling. Ah, so what do we want here? Well, unexpected courage. This is quite a good card because actually you could even use it for scrying if you needed to fight something at a pinch. Because once scrying is used up, it's used up. So, um, well, we'll put the Baron back on the bottom, um, and unexpected courage is a good card too, though doesn't really matter I might put put that one and then I expect courage on the top but it's very disappointing that we still have no scrying I'm thinking the scrying is going to be right down the bottom it is going to be at the bottom of the deck isn't it and I'm really going to struggle we might be into resigning more than anything else okay next action is to move into the um, hallway and the third action is to move into the Cellar. Flip the cellar. Two clues on the cellar. And dump, dump, dump. As we go down the cellar, we um, we uh, slide. We, we we notice it's a bit icy, and we slip on the on the stairs, and we go tumbling down and take a damage. Ouch. There we go. Okay. So yeah, that was um, that was a sort of a fairly standard go we um we started by scrying and then we took two turns to move back to the hallway and then down to the cellar so next go we can bring out the old uh, drawn to the flame such a such a good card and of course named after that very famous podcast drawn to the flame so there we go <clears throat> that's the end of our turn so where we and we're in turn four we move into the enemy phase there are no enemies to speak of so we move straight into upkeep and we get unexpected courage as we expected <laughs> it wasn't unexpected it was an expected courage thanks to scrying okay 
So there we go. Uh, full deck, full hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven. Um, hmm. So there we go. We've got lots of cards. We've got bags and bags of resources. Um, so yeah, I'm glad. I don't think there's um, emergency cash in this deck. So all good. Okay, so we move into the uh, Mythos phase. There are two Doom on, on this Mythos phase, thanks to Ancient Evils. So what has the Encounter deck, what joys has the Encounter deck got for us this time? And it is... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, this has happened a couple of times in the Investigator games, particularly when I've had Investigators with fairly average um, abilities to investigate. Uh, and this happened to Calvin. Um, yes, obscuring fog ends up falling on the cellar. It's just, it's, it's a German sausage. It's just the worst. But uh, in this case, it doesn't matter. I'll just send it to the back because, of course, we've got drawn to the flame, so we don't care uh, about that. But I'm really glad we have drawn to the flame. Otherwise, ah, oh, six round. That would have just been, that would have been a killer. So kind of lucky. Kind of lucky that we we have drawn to the flame, and kind of unlucky we drew um, we drew obscuring fog for the cellar of all places. But that's all right. That's okay. We've got to we've got to work around for that. So we move into the investigation phase once again. We are now in turn five. Um, three actions onto Marie, and so the first thing we're going to do is uh, first action is yep we're going to bring out. The, yes, we're going to bring out the Drawn to the Flame. Draw the top card of the Encounter deck and then discover two clues. So what does the Encounter deck give us? The Encounter deck gives us a Ghoul Minion. Ghoul Minion. So there we go. So uh, Ghoul Minion's here. Hello, I'm going to bash you. Okay, so the Ghoul Minion comes out and we discover two clues at our location. There we go. That's all of the clues. Crowd goes wild. <sighs> So we'll put a we'll put a marker on that. So we have we have now got all of the clues for all of the locations, but we are now stuck with a ghoul minion. Yes. Okay, so we've got two actions left. So um, we can either evade the ghoul minion and get out of the cellar, or or alternatively we could use blinding light. To do that but it feels like a bit of like we might need blinding light for the ghoul priest so i'm actually thinking the best thing to do is to try to get out of the um cellar and get into the hallway and leave the uh leave the ghoul minion behind so uh yep let's see what we've got here we've got um, we're a three and the good old ghoul minion is a two so already we're already better and um, I think we just throw in the unexpected courage. So that makes us a five versus a two. So it's a minus three or better to evade ghoul, the ghoul minion. Chaos bag says zero. Yep, we've evaded the ghoul minion. Where's she gone? Hey. So we've done that. Ghoul minion can't find us in the obscuring fog. And then I think for our third action, we get out of dodge and we move to... I'll just put this up. We'll just we'll move back to the hallway. So there we go. That was quite an action-packed round. We um, we drew to the flame, which uh, for our first action, we got the two clues, which gave us our victory point. We then um, we got a ghoul minion as a consequence. So we evaded the ghoul minion, and then we moved to the hallway. So that's our go. Still no shriveling. Where are you shriveling? Uh, anyway. Um, okay, so we move into the enemy phase. There are no enemies to speak of, so we move into the upkeep phase and we get the act of desperation. Um, and you see, even not having the flashlight, act of desperation works well with the flashlight, but we don't even have the flashlight. Um, but we can use that uh, item asset because I think... We don't have any item assets, so except this is not oh this is not an item asset either. So we can actually use this, but it's got the double fight. So that's something. Okay. So we're in the upkeep phase. Um, yep, 
we move into the good old mythos phase there are now three doom on here so time is a moving on and we still haven't seen the shriveling but we will use scrying one more time before we've used all its charges let's see what the encounter deck has for us the encounter deck has rotting remains good old rotting remains well this is better than grasping hands actually grasping hands is a you know much nastier card for marie uh test three so we are testing three willpower so i think it's time to bring out the guts so uh, we see some rotting remains Ooh, have we got the guts to look at it six versus three so it's a minus three or better chaos bag gives us a minus yeah one yeah so good oh boy if we fail that that would have been nasty okay so we uh, we guts which means we draw a card which means we get the baron so that means we put him into play I'll put him on this side yes the baron has arrived put him into play he cannot leave play unless he has three doom on him it's come at the right time because we can probably get rid of him before yeah uh, when any amount of damage is placed on an investigator in baron sandy's location place an additional damage exhaust him i'm going to do that right now so i'm going to exhaust him and um i am going to put a doom on him doom so there we go which means that while one or more cards you control has doom you can take an additional action during your turn which means the scrying won't soak up a go which is which is fantastic there we go so it is a bit handy but i want to get rid of him i don't want him hanging around for very long but maybe um we can um we can just use his ability for a little bit see how we go okay so um yeah so just where were we 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 survived the rotting remains but we it meant because we'd used guts that baron samdi came out and we put a doom on him so there's now technically four doom on the uh but but we'll um we'll be able to manage that before the end of the hopefully as long as we don't get no more ancient evils please okay so we move into the uh investigation phase three actions onto marie uh, and she does have an extra action which she can use for spell activated ability so let's do that right now so the first thing we're going to do as a free action is to exhaust the um, scrying and have a look at the top three cards and like i said this is a free action um because we've got a doom on something so here we go no way oh no way oh my goodness so we've got emergency cash which we just don't need chronophobia which we don't want and able-bodied which oh, i suppose it allows her to fight but oh my goodness no scrying and this means there's going to be no, like i can't see how we're going to do this because if we don't have scrying we're gonna to have to fight and uh we're really not fighters so i think it's going to be more a case of blinding light the ghoul priest get out of the hallway get into the study maybe try and get leader chandler on board and then i think then we're just going to have to resign but we'll see how we go so obviously chronophobia is going to go at the end um emergency cash and then able-bodied i think that's the the way we would want to do it um you know with marie lambeau it's really really hard particularly with the fantasy flight starter decks with some of them you really you know you really particularly not having a scrying you really just need to move on and resign uh there's no there's no uh no shame in resigning um because at least you won't be at the bottom of the the table you won't be at the top but you won't be at the bottom either so that was our free go um, I was going to say, so let's start drawing cards to try and get the shriveling, but um, I can't see uh, how that's going to work. <laughs> um, so I think the best thing to do is, because I've, I've got no way of reshuffling the deck to find um, the shriveling. So I'm thinking maybe the best thing to do is to get through and get to leader chandler i don't i don't see there's much benefit in because um it's going to be four turns before we would even have any attempt at getting shriveling and for all i know it's at the very bottom of the deck 
So for our first action, what are we going to do? I guess we set ourselves up maybe for... These cards aren't really... Well, just, yeah. Not sure what we do. I mean, we can draw, but then we're going to end up getting into our chronophobia. This is very strange. Normally we have lots and lots to do, but I'm actually not sure what we want to do here. bring out forbidden knowledge but actually to be honest I would rather use it to try and get Lita Chandler on board so I don't dear I don't know what to do because uh, um, yeah it's almost like I've foreseen my own future here um, hmm Hmm. So we draw the orbit though. Because they're only really the only card we want we're going to get in the upkeep anyway. Um, so if the ghoul priest has a four, I'm just trying to work this out, and we are a four willpower. Um so that would be a four versus a four. So we would need to commit some other cards to evasion. So we can make it a five. We can make it a five. We can make it six versus a four. And hopefully that's enough to evade the ghoul priest. Um, yeah, because if that doesn't happen, then uh, I think we're going to probably go for the attack of opportunity option which is not great but at least that gets that's what we're going to do okay i'm um i'm just i'm really just going to take three resources i don't see um i don't see really that there's much option here but to really evade the ghoul priest maybe try and get leader chandler although we're probably going to use up these cards so but you know we could try on a four versus a four and then resign because um yeah, we're, we're, we're not really in a position to do anything else. So let me get three resources. Three resources. That's our go. And then we've just got to throw in our um, clues at the end of the turn. So we move into the um, enemy phase. There is an enemy, but he's stuck in the cellar. Um, so we move into the upkeep phase. And not surprisingly, we get able-bodied. Um, and... Uh, Yes, it's now time to throw in three resources. Yeah. One, two, three. And uh, I might exhaust, because uh, what are we up to? Three, five. Yes, I might exhaust Baron Samdi again and put another Doom on him. I don't want him hanging around. So we, we, we do the three clues, which means we flip the barrier. Um, yes. Using the barrel from the attic, you carry ice and snow from the cellar and hurl it at the barrier. The barrier sparks and shudders as it consumes the ice, then hisses and fades out of existence. The barrier blocking the passage into the parlour has vanished. Reveal the parlour. Put Leader Chandler in play. Whee! Hello! Hello, Marie. How are you? It's nice to see you. You're going to come and say hi to me in the parlour? Oh, we could team up and bash that ghoul priest. And there the ghoul priest appears. Hello! Oh, I think I'm going to kill you! So there we go. What have you done? A woman with a torch stands in your parlour, a glimmer of hatred in her eyes. What have you done to my barrier? She screams furious. Before you can answer, a ghastly wail sounds behind you. And a creature wearing robes and a deer skull mask tears through the wall, advancing toward you. If the ghoul priest is defeated, <laughs> yeah, right, advance. Okay, here we are. All right, so that's the, uh, yep. So we move into the good old uh, mythos phase. There are four six doom so it actually could flip because we could get ancient evils but we we shall see so uh yeah it's time to check out what the encounter deck has 
and you can check it as well. Okay. <laughs> Another rotting remains. Um, now, any amount of damage is placed on an investigator, place an additional damage. Ooh, okay. So you could potentially end up with four. Nasty, nasty, very nasty. Okay, here we go. So it's a test three, and we are a four. Now, normally I'd be throwing in all kinds of stuff, but I don't, <laughs> I don't want to. So I'm going to take the risk. Oh, here we go. It's a minus one or better. Minus one or better. Chaos bag gives us. Oh, oh no. Ah. So um, okay. So um, that that means we're a uh, um, four three two. Two against three, so we take what we would normally take one, but because of Baron Samdi, we actually take two horror. That's not too bad. You know, could be worse. So there we go. Okay, so we took two horror. Okay, there we go. All right, so we move into the um, investigation phase. Three actions onto Marie. Okay, this is where it all happens now. So what are we going to do here? So our first action, we are going to spend two. And we're going to bring out blinding light. So evade. This evasion attempts uses willpower. And if you succeed, deal the damage. If one of those is lose an action this turn. Ooh, ouch. That would be nasty. But anyway, so we're going to attempt to evade the ghoul priest. So let's, we're a four. Ghoul Priest is a four, so we're going to make that a five, six. So we are a six versus a four. We're a six versus a four. Chaos Bag gives us a minus one. Whew, yes, but, but we drew a skull, which means we lose an action. So we evade the Ghoul Priest. Where's she gone? The Ghoul Priest takes a damage. Ow! And uh, we uh, lose an action. Whoops. We lose an action. And these all go into the good old discard pile. So, we evaded the ghoul priest, lost an action. And the ghoul priest is evaded with one damage. So, the next thing to do is to get ourselves into the parlor. There we go. We're in the parlor. Uh, kind of evaded the ghoul priest, which is good, um, which means it'll take him a bit of time to get to us. <laughs> a little bit of time. And uh, that's our turn. So we successfully evaded the ghoul priest, but because we drew a skull, that meant we uh, we lost an action, but we did a damage in the process. So there we go. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you, oh, Bob. That's good to know. Yeah, it does seem to have gotten more stable. I'm not sure why all of a sudden, but... Uh, Yes, it does seem to be that way. So, um, yeah, um, that's the end of our turn. So that was what we hoped would happen. So we move into the enemy phase. The uh, enemies are just where they are, thankfully. So we move into the upkeep phase and we draw emergency cash, um, which is of no help whatsoever. Uh, we can immediately... Um, now, well, let me think about this. So the Baron's got two Doom on him. We can exhaust him and then we lose him. Um, do we want him hanging around? Well, we probably don't because, um, well, I suppose if we drew, it's four, five, six... I mean, it doesn't really matter. We're in the parlor now. I suppose if we did draw shriveling, I can't remember what was there now. There was the Baron. There was emergency cash. Um, yeah, maybe we're down to the next card. So maybe, I mean, it doesn't really matter because once it triggers over to um, to the next one they're getting out, we've got 10 turns. I mean, it does mean the ghoul minion will start moving and other ghouls will start, but that doesn't really matter. But what would be great is to get shriveling and um, and actually have extra turns to use it, if that was going to happen. Um, hmm. 
four, five, six. Yeah. Do we let it flip or do we get rid of him? I don't want I don't want a ghoul minion or something appearing in the parlor though, so I am going to. I'm going to exhaust him. I'm gonna put another doom on him. And uh, when there are three when there are three or more dune on discard him. Bye bye, Baron. There we go. See you later. Okay. All right. We got rid of the Baron. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So that's the end of the upkeep phase. Um, mm -hmm. Ghoul Priest is back. I'm back. Where is she gone? And uh, it is now time for the Mythos phase. So there's now just five Doom on here. Woo. Okay, let's see what the encounter deck has for us. And the encounter deck has Crypt Chill. No big deal. Okay, Crypt Chill. Test for lose an asset. Well, there's only one asset on the table, so no big deal. We're just going to straight up test it. Four versus four. Chaos Bag gives us a minus two, so we fail. Um, we lose the asset. No big deal. Okay. Well, there we go. We uh, There we go. So here we go. We go into, we move into the... Uh, Investigation phase. There are three actions on Marie. So what's going to happen is um, is the ghoul priest is going to jump into the parlor and start bashing. So uh, we don't want to be taking two two because that will literally nearly end us from a horror perspective. So um, so what we could do is we could. First of all, try and see if we can get Leader Chandler on board. It would have been nice to have more, more things to do that with, but we do have this forbidden knowledge here, so I think we just give it a go. Oh, I haven't flipped this, sorry. There we go. Um, so we can resign and flee in panic, whatever. You know, we've we've got, we've got, you know, we've got two victory points. Um, you know, which will end up with four experience points. But uh, like a few of the other investigators, that means we won't have defeated a ghoul priest, but at least we haven't taken any trauma or anything like that. So let's give this a go. Let's try and get Leader Chandler on board because it would be nice to have Leader Chandler on board. So we're a five uh, versus a four parley to see if we can take control of Leader Chandler. So our first action is five versus four, minus one or better, and we get... <laughs> oh, no. Ah, uh, no. Oh dear. So no, it's not going to happen. You said what, Marie? Oh, what a horrible thing to say. I'm not going anywhere near you. <laughs> so no, that's not going to happen. Um, uh, do we try again just four versus four? I think we just give it one more go. and uh, But then, yeah, let's give it one more go. Let's give it another go. It's a four versus a four chaos bag uh, so this is our second action and if this after this i think we're resigning chaos bag gives us a minus two no so third action i uh we're, we're gonna die if we don't do this i'm going to resign so there we go we resign we run out of the place screaming our head off and we resign so there we have it that was the investigator games for marie lambeau didn't really go as I would have liked. Um, we were fairly fast in getting our clues and we managed to get the attic and the cellar clues thanks to Drawn to the Flame, uh, the podcast and also the card. Um, so we, uh, unfortunately, we never got shriveling. Where the hell is shriveling? No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. No, 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 no. <laughs> there was no chance that shriveling was going to appear anytime soon. So it's it's just as well that we didn't even try. It was a little bit disappointing that we didn't get Leader Chandler on board for uh, the next round when, when the Investigator Games goes to Midnight Masks. That's all right. Um, she survived the gathering without any trauma. And she, she came out okay. She's not at the bottom of the table. 
so she's she uh, she can leave her. she she walks out of the uh the the arena waving to the crowd the crowd cheers for her i think that was a valiant effort thank you very much for watching thank you very much for watching the live streaming uh, i really do appreciate it uh, next week in the Investigator Games, it will be episode 25, and that will be with Preston Fairmont. Um, so we'll see how he goes in the gathering. Please um, like and subscribe and comment. I really do appreciate it, and thank you for the feedback on the um, on the streaming. I really do appreciate that as well. And uh, I will see you next time in the Investigator Games. Thank you very much, and goodbye. <laughs>